The old God of War games set a new standard for the hack and slash genre at its time, with its button mashing combinations and savage combos. But let's be honest, all you did was abuse the square square triangle combo. So when the new God of War dropped everything to rebuild its new combat system, it had a lot to live up to pleasing the old and the new fans alike. And so in this episode of Player's Narrative, we'll break down how the new God of War brings depth to its gameplay. Let's start with the old God of War games, which had an arcadey feel with multiple weapons, flashy action moves and quick time events. You know the ones I'm talking about. The combo system was a little too forgiving and because it almost plays itself a little bit, it's really a mood point, because the attacks were so much fun and so satisfying to pull off, even if you are alternating between the two attack button system, seemingly at random. But after four major titles over the span of 10 years, it got a bit rote. Enter Kratos' new handy weapon, the Leviathan Axe. It has no reach like the iconic blades before, but it's still a powerful weapon. It's just as versatile and does what an axe is supposed to do. God of War's combat isn't as frenetic as the previous entries in the series. It's more tactical and careful. Kratos' act has limited reach, so you're generally getting closer to various baddies you're murdering. It has a behind the person camera, limiting the player to line of sight, indicators and audio cues to help deal with enemies. Kratos' new shiny weapon is an impeccable tool for this sort of combat. Most of the Leviathan Axe's charm stems from the ability to throw and recall it. It's just like Thor's famed hammer. I guess the doors only knew one power for the weapons. Instead of an automatic process that boomerangs the axe straight back to your hand, players have to recall the axe with a button press. It's a task that may sound an onerous and extra part of the process, but it actually opens up more options for gameplay. Kratos isn't defenseless when he divests himself the axe, he's free to continue to go to town on enemies using shield and his fists. In fact, there's enemies particularly designed for this, like the Revenant who can dodge your axe throws, and some frosty enemies are completely resistant to your axe. This makes the decision to throw the axe less of a choice to lose a powerful weapon, and more one that opens up the combat across the entire battlefield. You could freeze a Draugr in his place and show the other one a good time with your fisticuffs. You could strafe around and line up enemies in line of sight to hit a bunch of them as you recall it. This paired with precision throw and the fact that your axe always hits an enemy on its way back certainly gives the players a bevy of options. One of the things that they do retain is the ability to heal during combat, which takes a few seconds as Kratos smashes the stone to the ground risking a potential hit or death because God of War means Jack when the enemy is purple level. Atreus can shoot arrows on command and will strangle enemies on his own. The axe can have runes with different powers that can be switched at any time. And finally, you have a shield to block and reposit. Now, most of these fundamental combat elements sound like they're being ripped right out of Dark Souls. And you'd be right to assume so, as it does have its spirit, as creative director Corey Barlog puts it. Dark Souls, as much as we like that game, there is kind of this interesting loop inside of it that we wanted to capture. That's when we really, I think, started embracing the fact that not all God of War just has to be charge in, hit, and then sort of wake up after everything's over, right? We just didn't have that strategic element, that cerebral engagement. Combat in Dark Souls is a methodical affair. Block, then attack. Dodge, then attack. Attacks are slow and easily punished if missed. Even drinking a health potion takes several seconds unlike most action RPGs where it's instant. The game rewards the players that can keep their wits about them and actively punishes mindless button mashes. This style of combat is condensed to its core elements and the natural evolution of God of War's DNA makes the player still feel like a god and yet be challenging. 
Unlike Dark Souls, there's all of these contextual moves that you can pull off like when running or evading. There's a specific attack Kratos will do that's built intuitively. You could charge in for an R2 attack, because you're running, Kratos will do a slam attack for more damage. If you happen to be in a tight corner and evade, Kratos can swing his axe on the way out and do an evasive attack, leaving the enemy staggered, and combining this with arrows will do more damage as you're evading. There's a stance system which lets you switch to a different stance by doing a light attack and then waiting for a second that has different movesets. These interesting abilities lets the player make decisions on a die. If there's multiple enemies surrounding you, one repositor can stagger most enemies charging at you. You can throw the axe to freeze the ranged foe as you deal with the nearest enemy with melee in conjunction with Atreus's arrows. You can block attacks and shoot arrows and also call back the axe which hits enemies on the way back. You can trip up enemies with your axe by aiming at their legs and do more stun damage to take them down faster. Magic in this game takes the form of runes. You can attach different runes for a light and heavy attack with your axe and swap them before a battle to the ones of your liking. You can hold down R2 for a charged heavy attack which gives you iframes for a few seconds and it also adheres to the game design of risk versus reward. If all of this frustrates you, you could simply hold down the left and right sticks to let out some Spartan Rage to do massive damage as you gain back some health. You can be aggressive and defend yourself at once with the shield to block and let Atreus shoot arrows to do more stun damage. Veteran players good at evading can be more aggressive with a rune called Talisman of Betrayal that lets you slow down time to go in for another attack. With Atreus shooting different types of arrows, it only multiplies the buffet of options for the players to pick and choose. The single camera shot helps blend the player's narrative with the developers seamlessly. It does all this with smooth animations and finishing moves resulting in a deep combat system with panache. Kratos doesn't have a stamina stat, I guess From Software has a trademark on that. These, combined with Kratos' grunt, impressive particle effects and controller rumble, you're pretty much playing god. The shift in design focus from button mashing and arcadey feel to a more tactical and methodical one was a risky creative choice from Santa Monica Studio, but it resulted in the game evolving organically. It's the same game every time you play, but it's extremely sort of non-deterministic. Every game is different, despite every game being the same. There's a lot more to the new God of War, which I wouldn't want to spoil of course. It was incredibly fun to play God of War on the Give Me God of War difficulty and test its deep combat system. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you wish to support my channel.